Hi guys, welcome back to GK Code Labs. In this video, I would like to discuss with you some important points uh, regarding Spark streaming that might also uh, help you in some of the interviews. So, first point that I have listed is if you are using a for each sync to write the Spark streaming output, what are the three methods, three basic methods that you have to implement to get the for each sync output working? So, the answer could be open process and close so i have already made one video on this i'll link that in uh, i button please go and watch or there are simple steps they mentioned in the uh, spark documentation you can go through that another point suppose if you are writing your streaming batches into more than one outputs so what possible uh, optimization you can do uh, when you, you are doing this so understand this closely uh, you have micro batches and you have to write them into multiple outputs. So first best approach uh, can be you can persist that data because in case of such in case of some failure, it might be uh, the case that uh, output has been written to one particular output and while writing to the second uh, particular sync or the output, there might be uh, chances of getting that uh, particular batch recalculated, recomputed or uh, many other uh, things uh, can happen on the distributed cluster. So if you are uh, writing that, writing some particular batch into multi multiple outputs, consider caching it and once that output has been written, you can mention a code to unpersist that data. Another point is, what is the default trigger in Spark streaming? So there are basically three triggers, micro batch, fixed batch and continuous processing and the default one is micro batch. So you can keep that in mind. Another point uh, related to Spark session, how many queries you can write in one Spark session? So the answer is uh, as many queries as you want. There is no limitation and don't get it confused with the Spark context. Another point uh, I felt important is what are the basic condition for watermarking in Spark structured streaming? So if you are not clear on the watermarking, uh, kindly watch my previous videos where I have explained all this. And what is the basic condition? You can see these are the points like how an interviewer is going to approach. The first step they take is uh, firing such questions that are to understand your basic principles. So questions are mostly based on some kind of template. What are the three basic methods? What are the basic optimization in this? So similar kind of uh, point is this. What is the basic condition for uh, applying a watermark? So the condition for uh, watermarking is the data set should have an event time column. So whatever the time uh, stamp the uh, stream is coming in, that should have a event time column or it should have any aggregation applied on that event time column. So basically event time column should be there either as it is or any aggregated uh, column. Another point is what is string deduplication? So it is a simple phenomena of removing the duplicates from the streaming input and you can achieve it by drop duplicates. Another last point that I have listed is suppose if you are making a join on two streams, two structured streams and suppose both are watermarked so first string suppose it is watermarked for last 20 minutes and the second stream is uh, watermarked for um, let's say 10 minutes so what water watermark the spark should consider uh, for the joined stream so by default this is the minimum watermark so 20 minutes 10 minutes the spark will consider the 10 minutes however this is configurable you can set this value to max if you want to consider the maximum value of the uh, streaming data frames be being joined. So thank you guys for watching this video. I'll be keep sharing such points with you that will help for your Spark knowledge as well as uh, your interviews. So stay tuned to GK Code Labs and stay at home. Be safe.